Welcome to part three of the sea turtle tutorial. If you haven't already, go check out part one and two so that you know how I got up to this particular stage in the artwork. In this part, we're going to do all the final detailing and we're going to complete the sea turtle artwork. So let's get into it right now. So using Trident White, so I haven't thinned this at all because I'm applying it with a brush. So very similar to what I did in part two with the brush using the sand, which is what you see just underneath the white that I'm applying now. So I'm now picking out the brighter highlights again and with the brush just gradually putting them in, referring to my reference so that I'm doing it accurately and just building that contrast of the real sharp highlights versus the softer airbrushing that I've done previously. So do take your time with this. This is obviously the final detailing. The reason I do the white now is because um, I'm going to airbrush back over with a transparent black which will give us our final defining tone and then that's going to eliminate and sort of bring it all together so it will eliminate any of those sort of real uh, bits that look like they're just sitting on top. Um, it'll merge it all together so the highlights will look like they are a part of the artwork whereas at the moment they kind of look like they're sitting on top of it too much so that's what the final toning will sort out. Okay, so now uh, adding to my white, I'm going to add some reducer this time and brush it on. The reducer is, as you can see, making that white extremely thin. And this allows me to just go in and I'm just going to highlight and get a sharper highlight on some of these reflections um, at the top of the, uh, the water level there. So you'll notice it is going to seep into the canvas a bit once it dries, but at least I'm starting to get a very, very subtle sharp edge, which is what I want. I don't want it too harsh. Uh, this is sort of working well enough to just give it that sharp edge and blend back into it. So now I'm using transparent black. So this is transparent base. You mix that with your reducer to your liking and then adding drops of black to that. I have gone reasonably dark with this, so quite a few drops of black, so it's almost a solid black. However, by adding the transparent base, it allows that black to be a bit more um, transparent, so that that way you're not killing any of your detailing underneath. So even though I'm trying to keep that black 
within only those dark areas and that's important but if I am blending over a certain area it's just allowing that transparency to not ruin what I've done in my underlying layers. And if this is the first time watching one of my videos, then welcome for all our regular viewers, welcome back. And if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, and that will notify you every time I put out new content. And if you feel that this video could be helpful to someone else, then by all means, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. So the airbrush that I'm using for this project is the GSI Creos PS.770. As you can see, this airbrush has a MAC valve and it also has a 0.18mm needle nozzle setup, so perfect for fine detail. I'll pop a link in the description below so that you can go check this airbrush out more details or if you wish to purchase it. And I'd like to do a shout out to Spray Gunner for sending me this particular brush to test. Uh, this is the first particular artwork that I did from start to finish with this airbrush and I did love using it. So if you're interested, go check it out and I'll also pop a link to other products used within this particular video tutorial series. So you'll notice that I'm up nice and close for this particular step just to get all my final detailing in. I'm very, very careful not to overdo it. So little by little, I'm adding in my subtle details and nice sharp shadows where needed. And then a little bit further back in order to create my uh, softer shading.
As you can see for all of these details I'm very careful with my trigger finger so keeping that air pressed down you'll notice that I've got my finger hanging over the trigger that just allows for a little bit more control uh, that's the way I do it so it's totally up to you how you uh, hold your airbrush and providing you can get the maximum control out of it and whatever works best for you if you struggle to get some of these details freehand, then by all means use a freehand shield. Uh, you can also use some of the texture templates. And as you can see, I've incorporated a bit of brushwork into this artwork as well, because that just allows me to get a bit more contrast, rather than just having it all airbrushed and you get a bit more of that softer appearance, whereas the highlights should be quite predominant and sharp. So you can see that eyes taking shape now, just rendering over the top of those uh, blue sections underneath the turtle's eye and the markings around the eye. Again, I'm not covering everything that I've done. I'm only defining my shadows and deepening them. So you want to avoid just colouring over the top of everything because that defeats the purpose and it also creates a very flat artwork. I'm trying to get it a bit more realistic and three-dimensional. Remember, less is more. You can always add more to your painting. It's easier to add than it is to remove. You can really start to notice that by using this uh, darker tone, so this transparent black mix, how much it is making the artwork pop. It's sharpening everything up and um, also merging those highlights back into the artwork so it all looks like one complete piece and no longer looks as though they're just sitting on top.
So you notice some sharp shadows around the edge of the uh, shell on the base of the turtle and some softer ones so further away and just carefully dusting them in to control my overspray. You can go back to some of the freehand shields if you're not confident with doing it uh, completely freehand and just hold them on the edge or you could use the negative mask from the uh, paper template that was made to create this artwork to start with. So a little bit of uh, dot shading to simulate fish in the distance. So even little subtle things like that can add to the artwork, just don't overdo it. And now I'm switching to a transparent red violet. This is uh, Trident Airbrush Paint. So red violet mixed with the transparent base again. And I'm just going to add that colour in just to tint some of the areas on the uh, top of the head around the markings. So you can see I'm sort of half aiming for the blue section as well as the uh, yellowy paler areas of the head of the turtle. Okay, so I'm not going to go back in with white highlights using a brush. I'm using the airbrush now and I'm just softening some of the uh, highlights back into the patterns on the head and in around the eye section. So again, I'm getting a variety of contrast by doing this. So I've got my sharper highlights achieved with the brush and the softer ones achieved with the airbrush. Even if you're up extremely close and you get a completely defined highlight, it's still softer than what the brush could achieve. So you are gonna build that illusion and uh, it just gives you a little bit more of a sense of realism. So don't be afraid to mix up your media, whatever it takes to achieve the uh, outcome to its best possible outcome is what you should go for. So whether that means using a brush, scratching, you know, you don't have to use the airbrush completely 100%.
Okay, so pretty happy with all those highlights. Now I'm going to utilize the white and add a few highlights freehand into the uh, water reflection, the top right of this canvas. So you can see you virtually, it's very difficult to see the, um, the white that I did earlier. It's all seeped into the canvas, but it still has created a bit of a sharper edge, even though it's extremely subtle. So now I'm going to come in and do a bit of freehand airbrushing. Again, just to break it up a little bit, have that variety of contrast like I spoke about earlier. And now utilizing a texture template by Airshot Stencils, I'm going to sharpen up some of those highlights. So I'm just picking out random edges and spraying on those so that it's a bit of a mix of freehand and templating. So pretty happy with that look so far. Um, I'm just going to blend it back in now uh, and knock it back a little bit with the light blue. So this is just uh, again making it all blend back into the rest of the canvas. And going ahead with that light blue I'm going to add a couple of final highlights in around the eye and on the eye as well. Just a bit of a reflection. So you can see how being a light blue, it's not as harsh as a white would be. So it's perfect to just add a subtle highlight. I don't want it totally in your face. Okay, so here it is, the completed sea turtle artwork. I do hope that you enjoyed all three parts of this tutorial video. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.